Welcome to Lunch with Legacy Leaders, a weekly talk show with local and national thought leaders on issues impacting the black community. Now introducing our host, Ms. Anne-Marie Sorrell. Good afternoon and welcome to Lunch with Legacy Leaders. I'm your host, Anne-Marie Sorrell, President and CEO of the Mosaic Group. Thank you so much for taking time out of your afternoon to join us today. I'd like to bring on our special guest, Mr. Jafis Hardry, and I'll give a proper introduction once he joins us. Good afternoon, Anne, and good afternoon to the audience. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's truly a pleasure to, to be with you. Well, thank you. Well, before we start the broadcast, I want to first thank our sponsors for making the broadcast possible. Broward Health and the Florida Lottery. Um, I am super excited to finally get the chance to sit down and have this conversation with you. Um, there's a lot happening, especially in higher education. There's a lot happening just in the world in general. And so um, I really want to kind of dive in and get um, your insight and your expertise. And so, but before I do that, I want to uh, formally introduce you to our audience. I'm just gonna run through your bio. Um, really quickly. So Dr. Jafis Hardrick is an award-winning senior academic executive with a proven track record for promoting student success, enhancing student outcomes, optimizing faculty and staff development, and cultivating a culture of excellence. Dr. Hardrick fully understands the promise of education. Through education, Dr. Hardrick was, was fortunate to earn significant roles as a higher education administrator. He served as the Vice Provost for Access and Success at Florida International University, the nation's fourth largest public urban research university, Assistant Vice Provost for Academic Affairs at Baylor University, and now the President of Florida Memorial University. As an education executive, he is committed to developing future leaders and closing achievement gaps among underrepresented students and creating a culture of academic excellence in higher education. He is also the co-author of Making Global Learning Universal, Promoting Inclusion and Success for All Students. Hmm, did not know you were an author. Nice. Um, a visionary leader with a keen eye for strategic direction, Dr. Hardrick has developed a record of success by working across the academy to enhance organizational effectiveness and efficiency, improve academic quality, and ensure student success. Some of his professional experiences include attracting and developing talented workforces, increasing donor and business relations, and forging strong community relationships. Dr. Hardrick has been recognized as a strategic thinker, thought leader, problem solver, consensus builder, motivator, and fund and friend raiser. I'm sure you have to do all of that being the of university course. president. <laughs> he earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, a master's degree from Prairie View, Prairie View A&M University, and his doctorate degree from Baylor University. He's a proud member of Sigma Phi, Sigma Pi Phi fraternity and Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity incorporated. Ooh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's dive right in. So tell us about Florida Memorial University. Well, once again, and let me just say, take, take just a moment to say thank you so much for the opportunity to have a conversation about, uh, again, Florida Memorial University. Also, thanks to Dexter and so many others and for your support of our university. I, I think most of you know, and many of you who don't know, Florida Memorial has been around for 141 years. Uh, again, you're talking about an institution like so many other HBCUs that uh, was certainly born and birthed out of need and a demand to help educate so many, many of our citizens uh, and, and as we continue to move forward in, 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 a, in a country. Many of them did it with, with virtually no resources, but yet here we are. Despite all that we've done, we still exist to this day. Uh, Florida Memorial, as many of you may or may, may, may not know, Florida Memorial uh, was up in St. Augustine, Florida. And so 50 some odd years ago, the Klan went into the campus one night, shot the place up. Uh, again, we still have 300 and some odd acres up there uh, in St. Augustine. 
but yet they ended up coming here to Miami and particularly Miami Gardens. And we've been here now for 52 years in this spot. And, and so when you think about all that this university has been involved in, we continue to rise, we continue to excel. And many of the students that we attract at this university are young men and young women who are first generation college students, many uh, who probably would never get an opportunity at some of the other institutions. But it, we are blessed to be able to bring so many of them in here one way, transform them, provide the high touch they need, the supporting environment that they need, and then they end up graduating, going on, becoming some prominent leaders all over this, all over this world. And so that's who Florida Memorial is. Awesome. Wow. So I did not know that history. So do you guys do anything still with the property that you still own in North Florida? No, no, actually, we, we've had many developers trying to purchase it. Um, when, since coming on board, I've been trying to have conversations with some about, uh, again, a multi-purpose kind of use in partnership. Uh, but right now, I'm not interested in selling the property, but definitely amenable to having conversations about development. Absolutely. Well, no, let's definitely not sell the property. <laughs> we got to hold on to as much not. property as possible. Um, so HBCUs, um, I'm an HBCU grad, proud alum of FAMU. Right. <laughs> so I'm a Rattler. Why are HBCUs significant and are they more or less significant today than when they were initially established? Uh, and HBCUs uh, have always been significant and remain significant. Um, uh, I, I tell you, and, and for me, it is so hurtful when I hear around the country many a times uh, prior to the current environment climate that we're in, when I used to hear this question all the time, well, is there really a need for HBCUs? And, and I'm telling you from the White House all the way down, uh, I, I've heard these same question or this same question, trying to, trying to denigrate, dismiss HBCUs. But when you talk about HBCUs producing 30% or more of the talent that we have in our country, degrees in this country, uh, we are still significant. We're still relevant and we are game changers. We have transformed so many lives that where people would have never received such an opportunity if it had not been for HBCUs. And, and, and that's why many a times you, you, you hear so many talk about, well, we don't have the new buildings, we don't have this, or we don't have that. Well, yeah, but if we start, if we start learning to give back to our institutions and supporting of our institutions, we will be able to have some of the beautiful amenities just like so many of these other institutions. But one thing I can say is that coming to an HBCU, you're going to definitely be taught by some very talented faculty uh, and staff members who are committed to your success and your excellence uh, in life and helping you to fulfill God's purpose for you. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. And, and I'm, I promise I'm not being biased, but even being an employer myself, I see the difference in HBCU grads that are that I hire versus non-HBCU grads. There's definitely a difference in work ethic um, and in just kind of the drive a little bit. Yes. And I don't, and, 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 and I've seen this over time, so it's not like, you know, and so, uh, but I, even in my own work ethic and, and just some of the lessons that I learned from my alma mater and the professors that was there and the, the extra care that they took, um, an interest that they took in our in in our affairs and 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 and, and our growth <laughs> while we were there and just really didn't put up with a whole lot of stuff really just absolutely, frank. absolutely. <laughs> and, and and i've gotten i've i've had the, the 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 blessing the opportunity of going to um again some institutions um uh again across the spectrum uh hbcu non-hbcus and i can tell you this um the greatest experience for me is literally was when I was doing my master's uh, at Prairie View. I mean, the faculty were very hard, but you know what? They did it in love and they were only trying to bring out the best in you. Yeah. Some of those other institutions, 
I mean, the faculty were difficult, but they were just being difficult for the sake of being difficult. You, you, you follow me? And yeah. they could care less if you got it or you did it. Yeah. Um, it was no skin off their back, uh, if you will, for the lack of a better term. Um, it, you were just another number. But in HBCUs, you're, you're, you're a VIP. You're a very important person. And that's the way we try to always treat every student, uh, even those who come in with these crazy entitlement mentalities. And again, we try to work with them to help them understand how life really operates and, right. and try to bring out the best in them and how to balance um, some of their thinking and so on and so forth. Absolutely, because it's definitely, uh, well, and I'm sure you guys do this at Florida Memorial University, it's teaching and, and creating a thought process beyond um, the college experience. So, Absolutely. Um, so no, that's amazing. And hmm. <laughs> so for those who are listening, because we do have people in our audience um, from all different races that tune in and may not understand what HBCU is. I just want to clarify, historically black college and university yes. is what we're referring to when we say HBCU. So I realized we didn't, you know, kind of clarify that when we started this discussion. Um, how has the pandemic impacted higher learning in general? And then specifically, how has it impacted Florida Memorial University? Oh. Well, I, I think I, it, it's very obvious that uh, we, we're we dealing with the pandemic that has impacted our world. Uh, and certainly our, our country, um, we didn't have to be here, but this is where we are, okay? And we're, we're having to manage it, but it has literally destroyed a lot of lives um, in so many different ways, many small businesses. Uh, it, it has really caused us to rethink uh, higher education uh, and caused us to transition, if you will, to pivot from, uh, again, the traditional way of teaching and educating. Um, what are the things for Florida Memorial, even at the height of the pandemic, we were still here. We were still providing services to students. And I mean, we literally had to pivot from a normal way of, of delivering instructions to an online uh, platform. We did all of that in three days. There were other institutions who literally took four or five weeks just to make that transition. And, and I have to say that even at the height of the pandemic and, um, and even to, to this day, we have been a very blessed campus. Our students were responsible uh, and accountable, adhering to all of the medical guidelines to help ensure the safety of our campus and of our faculty and of our staff. So our faculty did a wonderful job. So, so it is now, we are back open for the fall. We're providing face-to-face -face as well as online courses for many of our students. And, and, and yes, we, 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 uh, see some of the students, their families, their their inabilities to cover, uh, again, for tuition. We see the struggle. And this university is doing everything possible with what few pennies we have to try to uh, ensure the continuity of, uh, of our students' education. Uh, all of that is so important to us. Absolutely. Man, this is definitely an adjustment. How have the students been adjusting to um, in person, I'm, I'm sure having to wear a mask and kind of space out and how they've been adjusting to that. Well, it's, it's different. It's different. Uh, uh, and, and I can, I can honestly say that our students have been extremely responsible, uh, in that regard. Um, I mean, you see them out on campus, um, and, and research has shown that most of our students prefer face-to-face -face learning. Uh, and, and not only our students, but many even across the country, they prefer it uh, as opposed to online. Some struggle. And that's why we, we created the hybrid model, just like most of the other universities across the country, to be able for those who need face to face to be able to give them that kind of instruction. So um, it, it's, 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 it's different. Let me just put it that way. But we're, everybody's adjusting, uh, if you will, to this temporary uh, normal. Well, do you think that out of this temporary normal and out of everything that's happening with um, the pandemic, with uh, the shining the light more so on systemic racism and everything else that's going on, 
has there what has there any be, been any new opportunities or any new ways for you to pivot as a learning institution? Um, has any opportunities come from all of this? Well, in, in every in every crisis, there are opportunities to uh, either improve yourself or stay stagnant. And 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 I'm one of those type of leaders, and I truly believe that if an organization is not is not uh, constantly innovating. Uh, it's dying or it's stagnant. Mm -hmm. And and higher education is, I think for many years has been one of those type of uh, uh, in institutions, right? Where right. We, can, we can become very stagnant. And uh, in this day and time, we have to be able to move at the pace of business and change. And that's what we're trying to do here. I can say that at Florida Memorial University, we have definitely taken advantage of some of those opportunities because I remember walking into the doors uh, two years ago, talking about moving from moving to an online space and offering degrees online, and 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 the resistance that I met was just unparalleled. But here we are, here we are, two years later, and we're doing what we said we could never do. So what it told me, or it it it, it basically pointed out to me, it was that we couldn't do it. You just didn't want to do it you didn't want to change. And that yeah. means that people get comfortable with change. And, and again, if you're not innovating and you're not changing, you're stagnant and you're eventually dying as an organization. And when I say dying, I'm not talking about literally, um, uh, I'm speaking figuratively, but you're not being as productive as you can be and you're not uh, optimizing your abilities as much as you 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 can. So I'm, so I'm excited about, uh, Again, this new academic year, we roll. We have, we started. Uh, I started football here. We're rolling out new academic programs, uh, expanding our sports programs. I brought band, uh, introduced band to the university. Um, we just uh, we just got a, a approved, and we're launching a new bachelor's degree in healthcare uh, uh, analytics, healthcare administration. Uh, we're we're bringing uh, esports. Uh, we're I think are going to be about the fourth fourth or fifth universe HBCU in the country uh, offering esports, and I'm telling you that is taking off like wildfire. Um, wow. There's so much excitement, and I think sometimes when people think about esports, they think about someone students playing on video games. This is a multi-billion-dollar industry that PWIs have been capitalizing on, and we've been slow. To pull up to the table, yeah. Uh, not only that, but but it's more than a video game. It really does teach you critical thinking skills. It teaches you about teamwork. It's it's a, it has a STEM base to everything that happens. And I think so often that we have um, we've we had a misunderstanding of what uh, esports was all about. So so we're also looking at. Uh, we're in January. We are also creating a professional, um, uh, uh, again, workforce development programs where we are bringing uh, construction management uh, online. Uh, we're bringing uh, medical building and uh, several other uh, kind of programs, medical office assistant, uh, and so many other these type programs to help people quickly develop skills. Because in this pandemic, folks are having to reinvent themselves, uh, if you will, and readjust. They're having to recalibrate, and and people don't have time to go to school four years uh, to get a degree. They need they need programs that are going to, going to help them develop tangible skills that they can implement immediately to help make money and bring in revenue for their families. And these are the kind of programs that we are implementing to help continue to grow this university. Well, that that's that takes me into my my next question. You've already addressed some of this and I'm glad to see that you have these new programs, um, especially esports. Yeah, for people who don't know and think it's just, I mean, hey, if you can create the gaming, number one. <laughs> Creating the gaming technology um, is, is, is definitely the place to be. Right. Um, running the gaming technology, cre uh, buying the building where these big gaming events happen um, pre-pandemic, of course, but they're going to come back and they're going to keep going and they'll find a way to pivot and be able to do it safely. Um, so that's that takes me into, you know, 
the next question, which was looking at the ever-changing landscape of technology, both internally for your operations, but then through curriculum. So, you know, artificial intelligence, um, blockchain technology, um, safety in, in, in data analytics and, and privacy issues when it comes to information technology. Um, do you see, or are you already adding, or do you already have those types of programs um, or do you see yourself as a university adding these types of really cutting edge, anything about automation, avatars? Um, uh, what's, the, what's the other one I just was talking about yesterday? Um, um, virtual reality, <laughs> all these different pieces. Yeah. Is, that, is that happening? Um, yeah, it, 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 is, it is happening at the university. And that's a, the that's a thing um, I, I have to say about uh, our university. And, and it's going to change. And that is, we have not done a good job of really marketing and telling our own narrative and the success story and the opportunities that we provide here at Florida Memorial. So we, we offer cybersecurity programs. We offer, uh, uh, again, engineering, nursing, uh, and so many of these, these programs. And when you think about the number one industry in this community, it is, it is, it is healthcare. And so we're bringing on two new degree uh, programs, plus the uh, bill, medical billing and medical coding and all of these other type programs and initiatives to really help keep our students in tune with the, with the marketplace and what industry is demanding. And one of the other programs I didn't even talk about uh, because it's so important to me, and that is to teach our students how to be entrepreneurs. And we are implementing an entrepreneur program. Uh, for me, there I have three goals for our students here at this university. And number one is that when they graduate from here, I want our students to be able to get into top-notch graduate or professional schools, medical, law, you name it. Number two, they will be equipped with the necessary skills to help them to be competitive in a global marketplace because we're no longer just working and competing against uh, individuals and graduates here in, in the U.S., it's literally global now. And the third thing is I want our students to learn to become their own economic drivers and become entrepreneurs, or they can choose to do all three, but this is what I want them to do. So we're literally, companies are pulling up to the table. We have a new Dean of our business school, um, Dr. Preston Jones, who is coming in and he's bringing uh, these type of initiatives that uh, I know will be game changers and, and creating, teaching students how to literally take your ideas and bring them into reality. We have companies that are saying, well, we want to work with you and help back and so financially support some of these ideas and teach you how to do it. Uh, because that's what we need to do. Always not thinking about working for someone else, but being, being create your own companies and, 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 and put yourself in a position where you can hire other people. And that way you have a legacy, uh, financial legacy that you can pass on for years. And those are things that have happened to HBCUs and some of the reasons why we don't see the kind of giving from our alums because many of them don't have that level of resources, those, those level of resources to be able to give back, back like some of the other uh, institutions. And so, I want to be able to teach our students how you can be all of those things and be successful in life. Because I truly believe God wants us to maximize and optimize our lives, not only for us, but for others uh, to come and for many, many years. Absolutely, no, I love that. And um, I'd love to be a, a guest lecturer for your uh, entrepreneurial program. Oh, we would love <laughs> to have you. Absolutely, count me in. So. Um, for your, is there a difference between, from a pricing standpoint for students um, who want to go back to school or who, um, you know, may want to do online? So is there going to be, is there a pricing difference? And maybe just in universities across the board, I'm not sure. Is there a pricing difference in online versus in person or does it still remain the same? No, the tuition remains the same uh, because the technology is very expensive, very okay. costly to maintain. And uh, so, so when you start trying to break it out into and segment it uh, and, and, and compartmentalize it, it becomes very difficult at that point. And so 
when you think about Florida Memorial, I know we're a private university and people think, oh my God, you're so expensive. It's 20, it costs $24,000 uh, a year to be able to come here. You can stay on campus, not on campus, uh, you name it. But we, despite the fact that we are private, we are the, we are the, 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 the cheapest among private schools, uh, even in our community. So, so I know sometimes we struggle with that part, but Florida Memorial, you're definitely going to get more than, than, than your, your money's worth when you come to this institution. And I think sometimes um, I, I would love to encourage our folks to understand you have to invest in your education uh, and invest in your future. And education is definitely going to be that great equalizer that you cannot do without. And I'm not saying you have to go to college in order to be educated. That's not what I'm trying to imply here, but I am saying having a well-rounded liberal arts type education, it's critical. It's critical in terms of just helping develop to develop the whole person. Absolutely. Um, no, I agree. Um, being educated, getting the skills trainings, however that is, um, and really following the trend so you know what to get your skills training in. I just saw a video yesterday of a, um, this automated robot uh, in the kitchen that became like a kitchen helper um, for a chef. So now your sous chef, what happens to your sous chef, right? <laughs> so, um, but someone has to know how to build those, maintain Absolutely. them, Absolutely. all of those different things, uh, run them from a you know tech support. You know, so they're different. You know, we we have to definitely be aware of what's happening, what's cutting edge, what technology is happening, and how to get retrained in those skills. And that brings me to my next question for you: um, is how how is um, how is Florida Memorial University responding to the growing and changing workforce needs in South Florida? And that's that's part of what I, I, I mentioned earlier in terms of some of the new programs that we're that we're rolling out is really to align us with uh, with the, the changing needs in, in, in our community. Uh, one of the things I, I also try to tell many of our students is that STEM is going to drive everything. Technology is going to drive everything moving forward. Yeah. And I say to them, I don't want you to not major in criminal justice, but I want you to understand the difference between what someone in criminal justice is going to make versus someone coming out with a degree in, um, in computer science or engineering. You, you follow me? Because right. STEM is going to be the, the, the game changer in everything that we do in our country, in our world moving forward. So yeah. I'm not dismissing programs like that. What we're trying to do is that we're trying to now stack those programs where, for an example, if you want to major in criminal justice, for an example, we're encouraging you to also get a minor in cybersecurity. Right. Uh, or you follow it, or in forensic forensic science, so that you you have something now that is going to really make you marketable. Right. If you will. Absolutely. And that's why we push, we push finance, we push accounting. We we have some strong students coming out of so many of these these areas. And uh we gotta start thinking along those lines. I, I think for for us as a people, um, honestly, and we think getting a degree is the answer. No, the key is you gotta get the right degree. Right. Because it's about what you do with that degree after you get out of college. And we see not only at Florida Memorial, but I'm just talking about in general. We see thousands of students graduate every year from all over this country, PWIs, you name it, uh, in areas where they end up having to work in fast food uh, simply because the opportunities uh, are just not there for them based on the degree that they receive. And our country is in desperate need of computer scientists, more engineers, more medical uh, fields. And, and just like we're talking about AI and some of these other areas, that's where the money is. And that's where the industries are going. And that's what we should constantly try to push among our students. Pay the price now because the opportunities 
that that are available now are definitely not those opportunities that your parents had years ago. There are jobs in this country, honestly, that won't be here in the next few years. That's just a reality because technology is changing everything we do uh, in our society. I agree. Now, I'm involved in different economic development organizations in Palm Beach Business Development Board, Broward, the Greater Alliance, and then we just had an um, uh, interview with the Beacon Council. Um, and they're, res <laughs> they're responsible for, you know, uh, bringing companies to South Florida that want to expand or relocate, et cetera. Right, right. And oftentimes colleges and universities find themselves being very reactive to that type of um, economic activity, economic development activity. Yeah. Do you find, or is there, or are, is it now, do colleges like yourself actually become the driver in the seat or is it possible to become a driver in the seat where because of the programming you're creating, you're able to now attract industry, attract companies to the area. Uh, and that that is a that is a powerful question, and certainly I think it's it's one that probably uh, should be a show within itself. Um, but let me let me just say it to you this way: I think most of us um, in this community, with the exception of some of the the larger research universities. Um, most of us are having to react uh, to a lot of the industries that are coming in. And, and, and that is one of the things that drive uh, large company or drives large companies to and attracts them to uh, an area. And that is, what is your talent base like? Exactly. If you, if you can't, if they don't feel like you have a strong um, uh, talent base from which they can draw upon, they're going to go elsewhere. And that's why we find so many times like in engineering and computer science and some of those high tech areas, that's why so many of them are having to go outside the country yes. to attract the talent because we don't have it here in America like we should. Right. I, I know we, we are definitely one of the greatest countries on the face of the earth. But we have also, we have to realize we've taken a significant decline from an educational standpoint and educational ranking uh, in this country. Uh, and and, and from, a, from a global standpoint, let me say. And, and, and one of the things that we do well um, is that I think in, in, in American higher ed is that we have a, a broad base, if you will, a well-rounded kind of um, educational system. And I've traveled and studied in other countries. And, and I can tell you, we really do have a good foundation. But at the same time, we have not done a good job keeping up technologically and driving the kind of change, uh, which for an example, when you think about the pandemic we're dealing with right now, when you think about the racial issues and all of that we're dealing with, which is a pandemic within itself, our educational institutions should be drivers of change uh, in, in that regard. And one of the things we're doing here is that we have launched now a, a social justice institute where we can begin to start addressing uh, literally from a research as well as policy uh, uh, management aspect to help deal with the systemic racism uh, and injustices that have subjugated us for years. Enough is enough. And we hear every day more and more videos and, and, and other news popping up about another black man being killed um, unnecessarily and nothing ever happens to some of our police officers who know what they're doing, uh, but they're hiding behind the badges. You know, and and that's, that's sad that in our country, we would, we would support that kind of nonsense. And I think now people are beginning to see what we've been talking about for years that has been happening to us. Absolutely. Well, I definitely would like to see, um, my personal, <laughs> <laughs> would like to see um, universities like yourself um, being the, really the driving force and not the reacting force. Um, not saying you are personally, but it's just what I've witnessed where 
universities and college uh, oftentimes are the ones reacting and not being the driver of and the driving economic engine of the different areas and regions um, to attract those companies to attract the business because you have the talent you're building the talent pool right? right so i think you should be in that driver's seat of okay we're building this talent pool kind of build them it'll come right <laughs> <laughs> I would think the same thing would apply in university and higher Absolutely. education. So, um, so I posed that question because of just what I had observed. So it's good to see that you that Florida Memorial University um, is, you know, on the cutting edge, is keeping up with the trends, um, and is working to do more, whether it's with racial justice or um, STEM or you know whatever the new technologies are. So, um, love that. What makes and we're gonna we have a, just a couple quick questions. What makes Florida Memorial University more appealing than other HBCUs in Florida? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> as well as that's, other state that's colleges. A loaded, that's a pretty loaded question. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, well, listen, here's here's what I would like to say, and, and I think I think um, I would like to phrase it this way: Florida Memorial has a lot of qualities about it. Um, and I think uh, the other HBCUs, which I know all those brothers who, who are leading those institutions, um, honestly, we we are in different boats, but we're on the same ocean, okay? And and we all have our own unique um, uh, constituency that we're serving. We have our own unique space and, and, and areas of importance. And so I just think we all play a critical role in helping to continue to educate um, again, individuals who look like us. And, uh, and I can tell you one thing for me is um, that's why I'm trying to bring so many new programs that will continue to elevate us. I have two goals for this university, and that is to integrate us into the greater community and to elevate our prominence on a global level. Now, there are a lot of strategies that will go into place to making that happen. And I really want us to be truly a premier urban serving liberal arts university right here in South Florida. Uh, we're in a beautiful location, one of perhaps one of the most beautiful uh, in the state. Uh, we have such cultural diversity here like none other. And uh, it, it is truly, we are a gateway to the Americas and so many opportunities right here in, in Miami. And only if individuals will come and see they will, they will realize that this university has so much to offer. And I'm looking forward to, again, elevating this university and growing our enrollment, having com conversations about new dorms, new facilities, and so many other things here. Companies pulling up to the table, now wanting to support the university. And I'm so appreciative because it's going to take all of us uh, working together. I work with uh, St. Thomas with... Um, uh, Barry University, FIU, UM, and Miami Day, Broward College. I work with all of these institutions because it's about collaboration. They have their unique space. They're going to get who, whoever wants to go there, but we also have ours and we're going to be able to attract our students here. But together, we're stronger. And when we work uh, in a collaborative manner, we only make each other better. And and I love that you said that because my my last main point before your closing thoughts for parents and I've heard this and I know you've heard this for parents and students who believe it is better for them to attend a majority white college and not a historically black college or university. What do you say to them? Well, I, I I say I say that that ideology is a little misguided. Um, and, and I think um, if, if some of those parents would only just take just a moment and realize that so many of us got our start at HBCUs. Um, and yes, those other institutions, they have the beautiful amenities that some of us don't have just yet. Um, but I promise you this, there is not another one who will out-educate us and who would take better care of your sons and daughters. I don't care where you go, Education is what you make it, and it's what you put into it. Um, and so the reality is, is that I know HBCUs are doing a, a phenomenal job of educating students. 
one of the things, and you mentioned it uh, even at the onset of the uh, the broadcast, that there is something about our students and 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 what we go through that gives us such grind. Now it makes us work hard, and and we know how to take lemons and make lemonade. You know, I, I mean, we just we know how to do it. You're looking at a guy here who was the first in my family to go to college, single mom, nine of us, first to go to college. I would literally took 18, 21 credits every semester. I worked 40 hours a week and I sent money home to my mother to help support my siblings. And, and she's no longer with us, she's in heaven now. But let me tell you something, uh, every one of those individuals ended up going to college or now they're, they're very successful. And, um, and so, so I know the power of education uh, and we have to make sure we stop denigrating our HBCUs uh, and sending them off to these other institutions, thinking they're all going to pro uh, and so on and so forth. Because if you're good, you will be, listen, I promise you, scouts will find you right here at Florida Memorial just exactly. like they will find you and probably find you faster right here at Florida Memorial than they will find you going elsewhere. So I don't want to be disparaging in, in what I say, but I do know that's a reality. And I think we as a people have been unfair and and, and unjust and denigrating our HBCUs. You got to understand where we come from. So the key is support us. And I promise you, we can build the new buildings just like some of those other institutions. Absolutely, I agree. Woo. <laughs> so any any last thoughts? What golden nugget do you want to leave with our audience? Um, and I, I think what's what what I, I the last word I want to say is that I want Amer I want I want Black America to wake up mm -hmm. and understand the importance of going out to vote, the importance of completing the census because our, our, the essence of our democracy is at stake now. And if we, if we take a back seat and don't get out and vote, oh my God, shame on us. Yeah. Can you imagine what we're going to look like uh, again another four years if we don't do something differently? And I hope people, whatever it costs you, go vote, either mail in or you need to stand in line, whatever it takes but do not go vote, okay? It is critical. Everybody in your family should be made to go vote. If you're not registered, get registered immediately, but vote, it's critical. Absolutely, well, no, thank you for that. And for those who may not be registered, I believe the last day to register to vote for the um, November election is October 10th, I believe, or October 8th, one of them. Yes. Um, so you still have time to register or update your address if you moved. Um, I know our supervisor elections just sent out new uh, voter registration cards. Make sure you sign it. And it's not too late to request your absentee ballot, your mailing, your vote by mail ballot. So um, definitely go ahead and request that ballot as well. So um, just a couple of, stay with us for a second. We just have a couple of announcements. Um, for those who are listening, if you have not checked out the 40 under 40 issue, which is the current issue, please go to miamediagroup.com and check out that issue. Um, we are excited to honor uh, not just 40 people because it's two issues. It's the Miami, Legacy Miami and Legacy South Florida. So we have 80 honorees um, that you can go and check out and recognize them. So definitely make sure you do that. and. We also have, um, and just forgive me one second, I have to make a, um, let me look up who our guest is next week. I apologize to my listeners, <laughs> um, but I want you to tune in. Make sure you mark your calendar and tune in every Thursday. Next week, we have another special guest. We have amazing people, I tell you. Um, Michael John, MJ Green, uh, who's the Vice President and Fund Director of Commercial Lending for Dade County Federal Credit Union. So we'll be talking about some money next week. <laughs> Um, but Dr. Japheth Hodrick, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much information. What a wealth of knowledge. Um, I look forward to supporting 
uh, Floor Memorial University in any way I can um, on behalf of Legacy Magazine and MIA Media Group. We look forward to continuing to support you and your programs. Um, and like I said, please, you know, hit me up for to be a guest lecturer. I'd love to come and speak to the students. At any I, point. I will definitely do that uh, when we get off the phone, off this call. I will send an email to uh, Dean Jones and make the connection. Absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode of Lunch with Legacy Leaders. Please remember to mark your calendars. Please share this video. Lots of great information in here um, for potential students out in the community, as well as businesses who want to get involved um, with universities, businesses that are looking for talent. Um, make sure you connect with Dr. Jafis Hardrick with Florida Memorial University and join us again next week at noon. Thank you.